In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create interactive software simulations using Articulate Storyline 360. In the earlier tutorial on creating screencast tutorials, we animated a shape in PowerPoint where we added a simple shape on the slide then had a uh, animation effect fly that shape in. And that's what you see here on the slide. This is that video on the slide. So let's say your customer liked that video but now wants you to uh, create a practice activity, a practice activity so uh, the learner can actually practice inserting that shape and applying the animation. Now in Storyline, you don't have to go and re-record another lesson because you've changed how you're going to show it. So if we come up here to Slides, and underneath the Record Screen option, you see right here we have a, a video. This is the PowerPoint animation video that we just inserted as a screencast video. Well, if I click it again, this brings open the Insert Slides window. You can see that we still have the same name for uh, the video that we created earlier. And then we have it also showing as a video on slide. Well, let's say we want to do a step-by-step -step example where the learner gets to uh, walk through this and practice uh, really doing the exercise you know, on their own rather than watching just a screencast video of it. So in this example, let's go ahead and insert this as a step-by-step uh, -step try. Now the big difference between the two, right, when we did the video on a single slide, it's just a linear video that's going to play from start to finish. I mean, you can make, add some interactivity with, you know, buttons over the video like we showed in that previous example, but it really is not um, anything but just a video. In this case, we're going to use the try mode step-by-step, uh, -step, which means it's going to break down every action we did on the slide. So if we're, you know, we're inserting a shape, that's going to be a slide uh, drawing the shape on the slide, that's going to be another slide. So every step that we created to, to record that video is going to be broken out as its own a separate slide. And then there'll be some captions for feedback and you'll see how that works. Let's go ahead and just insert that into a new scene, which is fine. And we'll keep the name set to try scene. So insert. Okay, so you can see that it now inserted what looks pretty much the same as the video, only if you look over here in the scenes, you can see all the extra slides that have been created. And if we jump real quick into story view, all right, here's our, our video that we created. And look at all these, right? So here's a, a big picture view of all the individual steps that we created when we inserted and animated that simple shape in PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and just jump back into this first slide. And let's go ahead and just now preview our uh, scene. So just preview, preview the scene. So the first thing you see is there's our, our PowerPoint slide, and then check this out over here in the menu. You actually have each step, each action you took on the slide, now broken out as a menu item. So this is a really great way if you wanted to create a visual step-by-step, -step, you could you know add, adjust the menu, edit the menu to say step one, click the insert tab, step two, click the shapes grid, and really create a, uh, a process or a step-by-step -step guide, and then ask the learner to uh, walk through the steps and, and prove that they understand it. So the first step, right, is to uh, click the insert. Now one thing you'll notice real quick, I'll just jump in on the next one, as I hover over one of the correct areas, there's actually a hotspot that's been inserted over each of these areas. Storyline does that automatically when you insert the step-by-step. -step. So you get the feedback right here in the caption. And you can you can customize the language here. Storyline's just pulling the menu names off of how the, uh, star, the, the, the software lists it, but you could easily uh, customize those if you want to uh, change the way the language shows. So I click it. You can see I'm just going to go through the process. Click and drag my rectangle. It's actually just putting, uh, it's playing a movie here because that's uh, how it shows. Once I click and start to uh, insert that, it's going to play it. Click the animations tab. Again, get that, that, that hover. Animation drop down. Get to fly in. Right, so I clicked and dragged to select that, and now it's asking me to input even the text entry that, that we used. All right, so let's go ahead and just take a look at the slides to uh, see how they're made. So we'll close our preview. All right, so when you look at your slide, it really just looks like any other slide in Storyline. If you look over here on the right in the triggers panel, you've got some triggers here. We'll look at those a little closer in a moment. Down below, you've got slide layers where you have your a try again hint caption. You can see some typical slide layers. You've got your timeline with a few objects that are extended at different uh, durations, but it's really just basically a slide. Now up here you see this little hotspot graphic. This is what's inserted automatically when you click each of the actions in the, uh, in, well in this case PowerPoint, but each time you make an action in software, 
Storyline is going to add that for you. And that's really where your interactivity comes from. So there's going to be a hotspot everywhere you clicked each menu item or clicked on the slide. Now if I look at the triggers for this, you can see over here in the triggers panel that we have a uh, play media. So it's actually playing a little video, a little snippet of the actions you took. So that's one of the ways Storyline can create these is that when it created that initial screencast video, it's actually just taking little snippets of those actions here. And that's really what creates this smoothness between each of the slides. Now sometimes, depending on the type of software you're recording, you know, these hotspots might be a little too small. They might be nudged over. Uh, maybe it didn't quite over, you know, get fully over the area. Kind of depends on the software. If you're using things like PowerPoint, it's going to be really accurate. But if you're using maybe a smaller uh, software package to create training on, uh, then maybe the labels aren't going to be as easily or as, as, as uh, positioned as you'd like. You can just resize it, right? You can zoom in a little bit here, right? You can position it differently. You can resize the graphic to make it a little bit uh, more accessible. But it's just a regular hotspot the storyline created with a couple of triggers. Now the other trigger here is the show layer um, hint caption. So if I select that layer, and that's really where our captions are coming from. And you can edit the text if you have your own verbiage for how, to, how you uh, show instructions. Uh, sorry, come back up here. Under the format, we, we can change the default colors of our captions. And this is just coming from your design colors, right? So if you have any custom colors over here, but you can just quickly change them using one of the uh, color themes right up here in the captions. Jump back down to the base layer. Now you also have one other trigger here to try again. So by default, Storyline is thinking that, hey, you, you're trying to practice something. So if you click anywhere outside of that hotspot, that's what this trigger is telling us, go ahead and show a try again layer, right? So if you're just nervous clicking or you just didn't know where to click, each time you click somewhere else other than the hotspot, you're going to be presented with a, uh, go ahead and try this again, please. And so that's part of the step-by-step uh, -step mode that's built in. And you can, of course, customize not only how this, how this reads, but you could also customize um, this actual graphic in any way you like from the slide master. So we jump down here back to the base layer. And the final trigger I'll show you is just how these slides move from each slide to the next. And so you see that right here on the screen recording action, right? So we told this media clip here to play, right? When we click the hotspot, go ahead and play that media, play this little media clip. And then finally we have another uh, slide trigger that says, go ahead and move to the next slide, jump to the next slide when this media completes. So everything's going to remain static until you take an action and that action is clicking the correct area, which this is the hotspot, plays the media, and then we jump on to the next slide. And that's basically it for creating your initial uh, screencast software simulations. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at how to edit these screencast simulations to uh, really polish them up. You'll, you'll notice that a lot of times there's a uh, little artifacts, and that artifact could either be just kind of indicating where you're supposed to click next, or maybe an animation doesn't fully play through. We'll look at it a little bit closer, but just to show you what I mean, you see how the insert tab right here is already sort of highlighted? And that's because the uh, recording actually captured the uh, mouse over effect, which gives that, that hover effect. Well, if you're doing a test mode, you don't want to indicate where to click next. You really want that learner to have to prove they know where to go. So we'll look at those. We'll look at the editing features and how to really polish up your uh, screencast simulations in the next tutorial.